My current file storage system is a bit of a mess. I saved my video editing libraries on an SSD, I dumped the archive libraries along with photos and documents onto a larger capacity hard drive, and I have a few other smaller drives for on the go use and some backups. Mixed in with cloud storage, it's difficult to keep track of what lives where and when last it was backed up, so I could really do with a NAS, or network attached storage device. A NAS is essentially a small computer that's hooked up to one or more storage drives to act as a sort of file server on your network, allowing you to access files from any device. It can also be set up to manage and automate backups, so you'll be at much lower risk of data loss. A Raspberry Pi can be used as this computer. So in this video, I'm going to see if I can build a NAS that performs as well as a purpose-built NAS that I could buy online. Acer Store recently reached out and asked if I'd be interested in trying out one of their Drive Store NAS devices for a video. So we're going to try and see how my Raspberry Pi NAS stacks up to their Drive Store 4. Their Drive Store 4 NAS is available in two versions, a standard version and a pro version. The standard version has a Realtek quad-core 1.4GHz ARM64 CPU, 1GB of DDR4 RAM, and 8 gigs of eMMC storage. It's got 4 drive bays for 3.5 inch SATA drives, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and a 2.5 gig Ethernet port. The Pro version has the same CPU and eMMC storage, but with an extra gig of RAM, an extra USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, and support for 2.5 inch SATA drives as well. So you could use it with SSDs if you'd like to. I've gone with the standard version for a bit more fair comparison with my Raspberry Pi NAS as it's closer in price to the Pi hardware, being a little under $300. For the comparison, I'm going to be looking at 5 criteria. The overall cost, ease of use, reliability, power consumption and performance. I'll compare the two solutions against these criteria to see which is better in the end. For the drives, Seagate were kind enough to send through 4 of their 6TB Ironwolf NAS drives to try out. One thing that's quite important for long-term NAS builds is making sure that you're using the correct storage hardware. Drives are usually a significant part of the cost of a NAS, so you might be tempted to go with lower cost standard desktop drives, but there are important differences between the two. NAS drives are designed to run continuously 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with a higher workload rate and a higher mean time between failures. For example, desktop drives are typically designed for an average workload around 55 terabytes a year where these Einwolf drives have an average workload of 180 terabytes a year. They also have a mean time between failures of 1 million hours, a figure that isn't even shown for desktop drives. In addition to this, NAS drives are designed to be nested closely together, so they resist heat and vibration better than standard desktop drives. For my Raspberry Pi NAS, I'm going to be using an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4B. This has a 1.5GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A72 CPU, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of storage through a microSD card. It's also got two USB 3.0 ports which we'll be able to connect our drives to, and two USB 2.0 ports for slower devices. And for networking we've got a gigabit Ethernet port. Because we've only got two USB 3.0 ports on the Raspberry Pi, I'm only going to connect two drives to it. Alternately, we could also use a USB hub, as the ports on the PAR all share a common PCI Express lane anyway, but we'd still be limited to the maximum bandwidth of this lane, which I think is 4 gigabits per second. I'm going to use these USB 3.0 to SATA adapters to connect the drives to my PAR, and we'll need to provide external power to them using a 12 volt adapter and a splitter. I'm also going to need another power supply for the PAR, as this runs on 5 volts. I could power the PAR from the 12 volt supply as well, but then I'd need another splitter and a step-down converter from 12 to 5 volts. I'm going to add a small OLED display to my NAS, which will be used to display some metrics and the NAS's IP address. To cool the Pi and drives, I'm going to use a 60mm fan, which I'll power from the Pi's GPI opens. Now that we've got the hardware, we need something to put the components into. There aren't a lot of options for a Raspberry Pi NAS, so I'm going to make my own. To do that, I'm going to head over to my computer and open up Inkscape. I've used Inkscape for a number of projects before. It's a great open source package for creating 2D designs for laser cutting. I sketched out the parts I need to hold the drafts, part, display and fan, and then I cut them out on my laser cutter. I cut them from 3mm tinted acrylic for a blacked out look that the OLED display would still be visible through.
To assemble the NAS, the fan gets mounted onto the front panel with some M3 screws. We can then mount our Raspberry Pi onto the middle panel using some M2.5 brass standoffs and screws. The drives hold the side panels in place and these support the fan and Raspberry Pi panel. Lastly, we can mount the OLED display onto the top cover, which will be removable if we need to get to our Pi. Then we just need to plug all of our cables in, and our Raspberry Pi NAS is now ready to boot. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to load the software and set up the NAS. I'll include some information on this in my blog post linked in the video description if you'd like to build your own. I'll also put the CAD files for the stand up for you to download. Essentially the process that I followed was to install Raspberry Pi OS Lite, then install a script for the OLED display, and then install Open Media Vault or OMV. Once that's up and running, we can access our NAS through a web browser by going to the IP address shown on the OLED display. It's also a good idea to set this up as a fixed IP address on your network. We can then create our file system on our drives. Ideally we'd want to use the drives in a RAID 0 or RAID 1 configuration, so that we've got a single storage volume and potentially some redundancy. But OMV and most other packages don't support RAID across USB connected drives, so we'll only be able to set them up as two separate storage volumes. I've created one for documents and files, and one for media like music, photos and videos. With that all set up, our NAS is now ready to connect to from our computer, and we can then do some tests on it. I've got three test files to use, an 11.7 gig video, a 1 gig disk image, and then a 1 gig folder of saved Arduino code. This has got 4000 smaller files in 1300 folders. For each file, I'll be testing the time it takes to write the file to the NAS and then read it from the NAS. I'll do this three times for each and then take the average. Copying a single large video across to the NAS, I get an average write speed of 80.3 megabytes per second. Copying the same file from the NAS, I get an average read speed of 94.5 megabytes per second. For the disk image, I got a slightly slower write speed but a faster read speed. For the Arduino code, I got a substantially slower read and write speed. The NAS is also accessible from a Windows PC. As far as power consumption goes, the Pi 4 NAS uses around 25 watts when booting and spinning up the drives. This settles at around 17 watts during use. The adapters do spin the drives down eventually when they're not in use so power consumption then goes down to around 6 watts. So those are the benchmarks to beat. Now let's see what the DriveStore 4 can do. The DriveStore 4 comes as a package solution with a 90 watt power supply included. So all we need to do is install the drives and it should be ready to go. To install the drives we need to remove the main cover. We can then slide a drive into each bay. I'm using all four bays, which is the maximum capacity of the stock drive store 4. 
but it is expandable to 12 bays using the optional expansion unit, so there is room to grow your NAS if you need it. We then secure the drives with 4 screws in each. That's it for assembly, we can then close the cover and get it set up. One thing you'll notice on power up is the drive store powers the drives up sequentially, I think in pairs. It doesn't just spin them up all at once. It does this to manage the peak power consumption, as these 3.5 inch drives use quite a lot more power on startup than when they're running. The drive store 4 doesn't have any display or HDMI output, so we need to figure out what IP address has been assigned to it by logging into our DHCP table or using a tool like Angry IP Scanner. Asus Store also provides a utility called Control Center, which scans your network for their connected products, making it easy to set up. With the NASA's IP address, we can head over to their web dashboard to continue setting it up. They also provide a mobile app called AR Master, which you can use to set up your NAS as well. I'm going to use the mobile app for now, as it's really easy to use and guides you through each step. I'm going to go with the RAID 5 configuration for the NAS, as this strikes a good balance of redundancy and performance. This configuration means you still get the capacity of 3 drives, with only one volume being used for parity data allowing the system to recover from a failure of any single drive, which is perfect for a home NAS setup. You can then also set up folders and manage access control. This was quite a bit easier to do on the drive store than an OMV. The app and web interface guide you through setting up the NAS really well, with explanations of all of the settings and they provide a good set of defaults if you aren't really sure what you're doing. To test the NASA speed, I'm going to copy the same files I used previously for my Raspberry Pi NAS. Copying a single large video file across to the NAS, I get an average write speed of 131.7 megabytes per second. Copying the same file from the NAS, I get an average read speed of 205.6 megabytes per second. The disk image resulted in a faster read and write speed than the video, and the code was substantially slower as with the Raspberry Pi NAS. So the drive store 4 is quite a lot faster than my Raspberry Pi NAS, around 60% faster write speeds and over double the read speeds. This is largely to do with having 2.5 gig Ethernet, which the Pi lacks. You could potentially improve this on the Pi by adding a 2.5 gig Ethernet adapter to it, but you'd then need to either get rid of one of the drives or use a USB hub as you've only got the two USB 3.0 ports. If you use the hub, there'd also still be a limit on the amount of data that the Pi can handle through the USB ports, so you'd be sharing the bandwidth between the drives and any additional controllers. This is one example of something that is both a strength and weakness of the Raspberry Pi NAS. It's great in that you're starting with a blank canvas, so you can customize the NAS to your particular needs, but it can also be quite intimidating if you're just getting started. There's a lot of information to sift through and decisions to make, all of which have some influence on the complexity and performance of your setup. As for power consumption by the Drive Store 4, I was actually quite surprised to see how similar it was to the Raspberry Pi NAS. It used a much higher 50 watts on boot and spin up, but this settled to around 25 watts once running. With the drive spun down, power consumption goes down to about 10 watts, and after a while it seems to go into a low power mode that reduces the consumption to the same figure as the Pi just 6 watts. Keep in mind for the running figures that this has two more drives than the Raspberry Pi NAS. So now let's look at our Biverse DIY comparison. We'll start off with the cost. The Pi NAS costs $162 for the parts to build the NAS without the drives, and then the two drives cost an additional $270 for a total of $432. The Drive Store 4 costs $290, and then the four drives cost an additional $540 for a total of $830. I separated the drive costs to make the comparison between the actual NAS setups a bit more comparable, as the two additional drives on the drive store add quite substantially to the cost, and the drive store could run on only two drives if you wanted it to. 
The Power Now still wins on cost with a total of $162 instead of the $290 Drive Store 4's price tag. For ease of use, this hands down goes to the Drive Store 4. It's a pre-packaged solution that you just need to select drives for, and Asus Store even have a drive compatibility checker online. It's easy to assemble and configure, and you're not left looking for adapters, power supplies or enclosures to finish it off. Reliability also goes to the Drive Store 4. The Raspberry Pi NAS is running off a micro SD card, which is known to fail over time, and connecting the drives to the Pi's USB ports means that no RAID options are available. That said, the data is still being stored on the same drives, so although the Pi might need to be reconfigured, you shouldn't have any data loss as long as the drives remain good. Power consumption is much closer than I thought it would be, but this also goes to the Pi as a marginal win. The drive store uses more power when running, as it's got two additional drives, but when both NAS solutions are unused, they're basically the same. Performance is lost to the drive store 4. Having four bays that support RAID and a 2.5 gig Ethernet port make it substantially faster than the Raspberry Pi NAS. So overall, the drive store 4 is probably the option you'd want to go for if you're looking for an easy to use reliable NAS that offers good performance for the price. If you've got the time to learn, or you'd like to build a NAS that's very specifically designed to your needs, then the Raspberry Pi NAS would be preferable. You could also save a few dollars by going with the Pi option, although if your time is worth anything to you, then this will probably work out to be more expensive as well. Check out Asus Store's webpage for some of the other NAS solutions available. I'll also leave a link to the Drive Store 4 and Drive Store 4 Pro in the video description. It's a really good product for home or small office environments where access to your data and data integrity are important to you. Also let me know what you think of my Raspberry Pi NAS in the comment section. I'll leave links to the CAD files and the build guide in the video description if you'd like to build your own. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.